Hey everybody, uh, this is Brad Strong, uh, co-creator of OmniClips Comics and line artist for The New Breed. Issue 1 and 2 is out on Indie Planet, um, and you can check us out on Facebook and check out our website, OmniClips.com. I will leave links in the uh, description bar below. So I come back with another drawing video. thought I'd try something a little different this time with you guys. Um, going to take it uh, a panel from issue three that we're working on right now and show you kind of the whole process from pencils to inks and um, also something else I wanted to try is instead of just kind of tell you what's going on in the video because you can kind of see what's going on instead of just kind of giving you a step-by-step play-by-play kind of commentary since you can kind of see what's going on I'm gonna, I was going to discuss something a little different um, that being said, if you do have any questions, feel free to please post it in the comments below, and I will answer them as best as I can, um, just in case there's something you're not seeing, because this video is sped up quite a bit. So, What I wanted to talk about tonight and kind of uh, share my thoughts on is, while I was surfing the internet and YouTube, over the past few days I've come across a lot of drawing videos about developing your comic book style art style and it just kind of got me thinking I just thought I'd share that with everybody kind of my thoughts and opinions and again just let me know what you think again in the comments kind of based on what I say um, I'm gonna start by kind of telling you a story about how my style if you want to call what I have as a style what I what I do and just kind of how I came to that and and, and quite frankly how Important it is and unimportant it is. Where I grew up, it was a very small town. We did not have any access to comic books. Every once in a while, there'd be some in the grocery store, but they were never consecutive issues. There's was no way to collect comics other than just random books here and there. And even after a while, uh, the, the grocery store stopped carrying them. So my only exposure to comics in any form were the movies, you know, Superman with Chris Reeves, the Tim Burton Batman with Michael Keaton, and then later on the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, and that's when I really started to want to do comics and draw comics. So when I didn't really get to read comics and discover different artists. I didn't get to discover the talent until I was much older. I was about eight, 17, 18, my first year in college when I first bought my first comic book. Um, and I remember specifically, I went into the Dragon's Lair in Omaha and picked up a Spider-Man co comic done by John Romita Jr. And was just instantly in love with his work. Became a big influence, loved the way he was drawing Spider-Man. And then shortly after that, I met Nick, the other co-creator and uh, colorist on the book of, of New Breeds. And he was kind of as my way into comics. He was kind of the guy I would always go to to ask questions. And then I got exposed to guys like Jim Lee, and the big one for me was Mike Turner. And so that kind of became my guy. I just loved his style, loved everything he did. Um, and then just kind of from there started to just ape him pretty much. Everything, I would just sit and try and draw like Mike Turner. I just wanted to, you know, I used to say if I, he figured out my style before I did, and it was kind of, a, you know, as ridiculous as that sounds, that's kind of how I felt at the time. So as I got older, I kept kind of doing that, I kept trying to be Mike Turner, and it really wasn't working well. Because what eventually happened was, is I'm was working so hard to do my artwork like his, it was taking me so much longer because I, what really kind of came to an apex was I eventually caught myself one day. I was sitting drawing and I couldn't figure something out. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember having the thought, well, what would Mike do? And I thought to me that was just a terrible idea. I was like, that dude, just like, why do I care what he would do? You know, that 
I should be doing what I do. I should be me, not Mike Turner. And so from there, you know, I started getting away from trying to be like him. Stop looking at the artwork quite so much that he did. And started looking at other influences. And stop, you know, I mean, I've eventually throughout the years I've come in, in contact with more and more comics, obviously. And through that, more and more comic book artists. And my influences have expanded, you know, to, you know, obviously Greg Capullo, uh, Todd Nock, Ryan Otley. Oh, and so many, Tim Sale, so many more. And then I started to see that comics have a very wide range of styles. There's no, there's no real comic book style. I think most of the way comics are a stylization is more through camera angles and storytelling. So that's kind of what I started focusing on, is how am I going to tell my the story that I'm trying to do? How would I do it? And just and then I started, you know, obviously working on anatomy, and, and I, I did a little bit of life drawing, probably not as much as I should, and I, I still need to work on that. That's something I still need to, you know, practice, and something I still focus on pretty heavily these days. But even then, that be, you know, that's, that's a lifetime study you always improve you're always looking to get better at you know you know drawing anatomy drawing backgrounds you know the the every, it's in a constant state of flux and hopefully an improvement um so i i mean i i've even caught myself at times not caught myself i've actually had conversations with nick we were talking on the phone before we started new breed and i was working on another book that uh uh, I remember say, saying to him, "Is like I think my style needs to change, or I need my style to do this, or be that, or so on, or so forth." Um, and what I, you know, looking back at it now, in hindsight, I mean, this was two, three years ago. Me and him, I remember having this discussion with him. What I was kind of trying to, what I was figuring out, what was happening is that my style didn't need to change. I was just trying to improve. I could start, you know, when you learn something new, excuse me, you, you want to use that as much as possible because you, you, you've discovered something new. It's cool. It's, you, you, you want to do it, you know, in every panel and every, every uh, figure or whatever, every background, whatever you, you know, you stumble on. And then once you do that for a while, you're like, well, I want, to get better, I want to find something else, and sometimes it's just frustrating because you hit a, you hit a wall, and I find about every three or four months I really hit this wall where I'm like it just doesn't look good anymore. It does, that doesn't, you know, I, you know, I've got this part down and I like using it, but I don't want to use it in every panel anymore because it's getting old and I need to, you know, improve. And again, it's not a style thing; it's more just better art. I want my art to be better. So that's what I've come to is kind of my point is, is is the style part of it. People who are sitting around trying to figure out, I need my style to be this. I need my style to be that. I want it to look like this guy's or that girl's or whatever it is. It's kind of a waste. It's, it's, it's part, mainly a waste of time because your style is you. It's as unique as your own handwriting. It's something that's going to develop on its own whether you like it or not <laughs> at first. It, 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 it's, it's, it's just how you do things. And it's not worse or better or, you know, it's just you. It's your expression of how you do things. So in the way I kind of got over trying to figure out well, what's my style, or my style needs to do this, was to, quite frankly, start drawing more, and, and <laughs> I guess, faster to an extent. A lot, I mean, my, my whole thing is, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're into comic books and comic book art, and that's where my perspective really comes from, and again, it's, it's 
developing your comic style is if you want to find your style or you, you're, you're hooked, you know, hung up on I need to find my style or whatever, the best thing you can do is just draw comic books, draw pages or pinups or whatever. Just give yourself, you know, a deadline. If you want to do a pinup, say I want this pinup of Spider-Man swinging through the city. Maybe he's being chasing the goblin, whatever it is. And don't sit and mull over it for, you know, four, five, six, seven days. Give yourself a deadline. Say I want this done in three days. Wherever I'm at in three days. That's that's going to be it. And, 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 you know, it could be longer depending on how, you know, three, I mean, I would not, not again, not seven days, but three, three or four days. Because if you're going to do a pinup with the proper anatomy, perspective, lighting, especially if they're swinging through the city, you got a couple characters. And again, and I'm talking if, you know, I have a day job, so I have to do all this when I get home, I do 40 hours at my day job, then I come home and do the comics. So I'm saying if you have that time crunch, give yourself about three to four days. And wherever you're at in that time, just just kind of stop. D do it for yourself. Don't do it to post online and have everybody tell you how good you are. Which is fun, don't get me wrong, I love that too. But that's not the purpose of this. I, I think, because what I found is the faster I had to work the more my style emerged because I didn't have time to think about it. I'm not sitting there looking at it like, this doesn't look like Turner, this doesn't look like Jim Lee, this doesn't look like Ryan Otley, this doesn't look like, there's no time to think about that. There's no time, I mean, if you, if you sit and mull over it to the point where you're trying to make it look like someone else, you're, you're going to lose your you're gonna lose time and by losing time you're eventually gonna lose work and being able to produce more work because you're so busy trying to twist what you do into what other people do it's not it, it's just gonna it's just not gonna work in my opinion that's what I found is like the faster I worked the more I worked page after page after page panel after panel pin up after pin up what I do is just what I do this is whether you like it or I like it or it's just it's just how it comes out it's just how I see the world how I interpret it and that's really what your style is is how you perceive the world around you and it might not look like you know John Romita's world or or whoever you know it's just, it's just not gonna because you're two different people you have two different set of eyes, brains, perceptions. It's just not going to happen. And also, by trying to mimic other people, you're just going to find that you're only going to be a copy of that person. And that that's not going to get you work. Yes, Jim Lee is co-publisher, co-editor, or whatever of DC, because he's Jim Lee, he's a great artist. Some people don't like him, that's cool. But he does. you don't get to be that level of artist by copying somebody else. You can be influenced by those people and say, I kind of like this, I uh, like how they do this, how they do that. And kind of start incorporating it. But again, you're just going to be, if, if you try to just copy that it's just you're just going to be a you know a copy of this person and nobody really wants that because they have they have him why would they want you know the knockoff version of you i know when i went to comic-con a few years back i went to uh, wizard world up in chicago showing my work around and i got to talk with uh coy turnbull i believe so you pronounce his name and he looked at it and he's like I see influences 
And just the way he said it, I knew exactly what he meant. And from that point on, I had to. I, I really started moving away from where I, what I was trying to do, which was beat Mike Turner. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I, I guess I, by trying to be someone else, you're you're denying other artists, other people what you have to offer. We're all individuals and that's a good thing. We all see the world differently. We all create art differently. And just because it's not exactly like somebody else's or like this person's or that person's, it's not bad. I mean, there are people out there who, you know, I, I run into them all the time is they're like, I can't draw a stick person as you know, but the problem is, is yes, you, you could if you put the time into it. That's really what it comes down to, is just putting the time in, learning everything, looking at everything, and kind of take it in, put it through your filters, through your, you know, ciphers, and then just put it down on the page. How you see the world, what you, what you take away, and how you want people to see the world. You know, as artists, we have that very unique ability to show the world what we see or how we see it because we're able to draw it. We're able to show people, this is the world through my eyes. And that's part of the reason I love doing this. I remember, you know, I, I drew something. I had a guy, he asked me to draw something that he had in his head. He's like, I've had this in my head for years. and I've always wanted to see it drawn and I've always wanted, you know, but I can't draw. I've tried, and it's just, it's terrible. I don't come close. And so he described it to me. I sat and I drew it for him. And I and I swear, it's kind of the oddest thing. We were in a bar, so this, the, you know, a few beers deep, he might have, you know, may have overreacted a little bit. Kind of started breaking down a little bit. He's like, I've had this in my head for so many years. To see it on paper is just the coolest thing ever. It's, it's like, and it's true, though. That's why we draw. I know at least I know that's why I draw is to sit and see this thing in my head on paper. It's such an adrenaline rush to create something from nothing. You know, and, and you get these weird I mean and again the more you do it, the better you get, the harder you work, you, you start meeting more people and you just get more reactions like that. So I guess my we're kind of getting close to the end here. Kind of my whole point is is don't try to be someone else. Be influenced by other people, but really don't focus on style. Just focus on drawing because your style will float to the top because that's who you are. I mean, it's important to have your own voice and to make sure that that voice is heard by drawing more and more and getting it out there because again if you're trying to copy somebody else it's gonna slow you down because you're trying to reach a level or you're trying to reach something that's not a part of you it's not you it's somebody else <coughs> excuse me so we got about five more minutes left here again uh, we do got um, issue one and two up. If you stuck with us or have already purchased the books, thank you so much. We really appreciate the support. We want to keep this going as long as possible and hopefully in the future be able to bring more people into our world and get other artists and writers and help, you know, get get people's ideas out there. So again, thank you so much if you bought one. Go check us out. Uh, Indie Planet issue one and two is up there for digital download and um, and print on demand, so that you can uh, order a print copy. It'll get sent to your house. Also, we are starting a new thing that we're going to start printing, and I believe in the next issue is called Meta Mail. It's something where it's kind of like you know a letters column. We'd like to hear from you guys what you think, what you'd like to see, what you think of you know the characters, you know guesses on where you think the story's going, stuff like, you know, whatever. If you just want to write us and say, hey, how's it going? We'll, we'll answer you. We'll, we, we want to be as close to our fans as possible. So again, please go uh, check us out. 
and man, this long video. So please, th or thank you for sticking with me on this. It's it's kind of a longer video. So again, thank you guys. Uh, there's a few minutes left here. So again, I got the I'll have the links to our Facebook page, our website, and um, the Indie Planet uh, down in the links below. And again, if you see anything in here that kind of caught your eye or kind of curious of what I'm doing. Please uh, feel free to leave uh, those in the comments. Real quick, just kind of uh, specs of what I'm using here. I got it. Um, I did all the penciling in Photoshop CS4. I'm doing all the inking in Manga Studio 4 EX, and I do or I am working on a uh, Wacom Cintiq 12 WX. So, all great products. So. If you have any questions, again, like maybe even on the Cintiq, if you're thinking about buying a Cintiq or, you know, curious about the programs, um, Manga Studio is great. It's one that I highly suggest for anybody who's working digitally. Also, give, let me know what you think about, you know, kind of feedback on the discussion here. So. This is something I want to keep trying. I'm, I'm going to try and get another video out here probably within the next few weeks. And again, if there's a topic maybe you'd like me to cover, or just opinions or questions on how to do something, whatever it is, please leave it in the comments. I, 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 you know, I don't want to just make videos where I'm talking about what you're seeing. I, th I think those get a little boring, and I don't want to do videos where there's just no commentary or just music or silence because I've tried to watch videos like that they're tough to get through even though you know I like seeing how people uh, draw I you know I find myself just running through the video pretty quick because I want to see you know this is how we did this this is how they did that this I just kinda want to see the end product after about 10 minutes and I'll just kinda skip around to spots I'm looking for so again thanks for watching guys uh, check us out on Facebook, Indie Planet, and we will see you here shortly. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a good night.